it hey we are live here on this google hangout tonight and of course as things go there are always some technical difficulties but tonight i am being joined by sarah sanchez who is going to be our production kind of assistant moderator tonight and she will be handling all of your questions so if you do have any questions please feel free to hang uh to type them in in the google hangout below if you're watching on youtube i'm sorry we haven't gotten that technically advanced yet to monitor that yet um so actually on the hangout page we will be monitoring those questions so please watch over there if you do have something to ask and please ask away we love questions um, also joining to me tonight is my business partner Jason Lang he's having a little bit of trouble with his uh, with his camera tonight <clears throat> he uses a, a PC but you know we won't talk about that uh, <laughs> but Sarah and I are both Mac girls hi Sarah thank you so much for helping us out tonight of course thank you for letting me help you this is really exciting yeah, yeah, we're gonna have a good time with this. So uh, tonight we're gonna be talking all about creating images for your business. And for a lot of business owners, that tends to be quite a bit of a struggle. Um, I hear a lot of times people say, you know, I'm just not that creative. I don't have the budget for a graphic designer. You know, I just don't know what to do. And my images just aren't that great. What do I do, you know? And sometimes they just give up or they just don't have enough time really to dedicate to, to tweaking things. Well, it doesn't have to be that complicated and tonight we're going to talk about you know how to make the process easier what it really takes to get those great images and show you some examples of images that really work well online uh, we're actually going to pick on a few people <laughs> uh, but we'll be nice I promise we'll, we'll do it with kindness and with love all the way around to, to make sure you guys do some great stuff for your own businesses um, let's give Jason just another few seconds to try to log on back here. Um, Sarah, let's talk to you about, you know, you're kind of in a different generation than I am and how you sure. use the internet <laughs> and mm -hmm. how exactly how images affect you when you see something online. Okay. Well, um, definitely I would say my generation is a bit, um, maybe a little bit more than a bit more image focused. Um, you can see a lot more lately, um, popular sites with, I guess, people in their 20s and teens um, feature lots of, uh, lots of different images. You'll see a lot more articles that are um, shifting away from text-based and going a lot more towards um, uh, flashier images and infographics are becoming a lot more popular. So I think um, being able to see something and tell right away what's going on and um, what is important um, is definitely something that's going to set one article apart from another. I will definitely take the time to look at something and actually probably read the article or that sort of thing if it, you know, catches my eye more directly than something else that, you know, doesn't have an image at all or the image is not as great of a quality. So definitely I would think that um, images are something that are important for boosting that sort of um, readership or membership to what it is you're trying to put out on the internet. Yeah, yeah, and you said something um, kind of important there, I think, is, you know, something that kind of quickly caught your eye. Mm -hmm. um, there's so much competition for things online. They have to catch your eye to really stand a chance, you know, for you to engage with it, to read it, to click on it, you know, whatever the case might be. Um, looks like Jason has been able to log on. Jason, can you hear us? I can, yes. I'm trying okay. to get my camera to fire back up again here. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> since you're here, welcome. Why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself? I, you know, actually, I haven't done that yet. I'll give you a second to get your camera going while I give my little spiel. For those of you that aren't familiar with me, my name is Cynthia Sanchez, as you can see on the screen. And um, I have been working on a business for the past few years called Oh So Pinteresting, where I help other business owners learn how to use Pinterest as a part of their social media marketing. And Jason and I teamed up to create Web Images Made Easy which is a, is a course that helps business owners really learn how to do this process quickly and easily. Um, so, you know, my background is in Pinterest, which is all about images, so we had to do this. Um, Jason has more of a, a, you know, traditional background in marketing. Jason, are you all set to, to tell us about that a little bit? I guess not. So, <laughs> since this is a live, we're just going to go with the flow. Um, are you... Yeah, are you there, Jason? <laughs> I'm trying. You're trying. It's okay. Let's we'll just skip the camera for now and let's just go ahead and hear a little bit about you and then we'll jump into the meat of the show tonight. Okay, great. Well, um yes, I'm very happy to be here and uh, sorry for the technical difficulties, but um yes, uh, 
coming from a little bit more traditional background, but really trying to dive into the to the psychology of marketing and to understand what works and what doesn't and why, and really to develop a strategy because uh, unfortunately I've had the same experience that many small business owners have had in the past, which is spending a lot of money on marketing that doesn't work, and that's really, really frustrating. And so I was really excited when I got the opportunity to um, team up with you and work on this and, and really work out not just the nuts and bolts of how to create an image, but why we're creating it and how to make it really effective. Well, thanks so much, Jason. I hope those technical difficulties get straightened out. But let's mm -hmm. go ahead and jump on into our, our, I guess, the like I said, the meat of the show tonight. Um, can you see that first slide, Jason? Yes. Okay. Well, let's, tonight is all about how to create great images for your business, so let's get to it. So tonight we're going to go over a few things tonight. Um, I'm saying tonight a lot. Jeez, what's going on with that? Um, but we're going to look at the shift to visual, well, how we've kind of moved from just text-based things to, to visual-based things. Just as Sarah explained, it has to have visuals to catch her attention online. Um, and why it is that images work. What is it about them that makes them so powerful? And we're also going to take a look at those real-world examples that I mentioned earlier. And at the very end, we're going to have a special offer for you. And it's going to be fun, kind of contest-like. And of of course, everything's just kind of dinging and everything around here, so let's keep on going. So, um, remember where the internet first started. I remember getting online on a computer similar to this. Now, when I started college, I thought I was just like living it up because my college in their computer lab had these everywhere, just a plain gray screen that was kind of big and bulky and all you saw was this text. But now we have quickly moved to something that is a bazillion times more powerful that we can carry around in our pockets and do so much more with. Um, technology has definitely gotten much easier, it's gotten much more affordable, and this is really a great opportunity for businesses, which I'm sure a lot of you have already begun to experience or have experienced already. Um, but let's let's kind of kind of take things back just a bit and look at why images work. Um, you know, Sarah said it had to catch her eye, and that is really true when it comes to images because we get a different kind of connection with them than we can with text. Even if we were to read the same, you know, kind of descriptive words that told you about things, um, you wouldn't have the same connection. If I described I am laying on a beach and there's a red pail next to me and you had to read that, it's going to take a lot longer for your brain to process that and, and you're not going to have as deep of a connection with it as you would as if you saw this image. And I love this image. I use this image a lot because I just wish I was living on that beach. Sorry about that, guys. Um, and when it comes to images, um, there was a, a TED Talk, and this is a, a TED Talk that came out quite a few years ago, back in 2008, but this still definitely rings true. When you look at images, a sense of time disappears. You forget yourself and you feel like you're a part of something larger. And this uh, is by a gentleman named Haley Chis... I, I, I don't even want to try to butcher this poor man's last name. There's a lot of consonants in it. Uh, but, you know, what he said was really true. Think about it when you look at an image. You know, you, you can just decide whether you like it or how it makes you feel. This image of this you know, beach scene makes me feel warm, makes me feel relaxed, makes me feel happy. But for other people, it might make them feel, oh, that sunburn that they got. It might, you know, spur memories of pain or sand in places that it shouldn't be. That's that's not a good memory for them. But either way, it was a connection, right? And it would be much more difficult to do that with text. Um, and we, we kind of are drawn towards images. That's why we watch TV more than, you know, we listen to the radios. We go to the movies, you know, those types of things. And we've seen technology kind of move us more towards images. And it just makes sense for us physiologically. And for us as business owners, there is a really big advantage um, to using images online than maybe some of the bigger than the bigger businesses have. As smaller business owners, we can choose which images we want to use. We can customize them, you know, at the drop of a hat. We don't have to go through multiple layers of bureaucracy or, you know, from this apart department to change it to that department to finally get approval from the boss or the legal department. Um, and you can kind of see this online. So I see this as a really big advantage for small business owners. And I'm going to show you the perfect example of this, kind of comparing what a small business can do um, as an, in comparison to a large business. And I think this really helps level out the playing field where the bigger business or on, um, you know, print publications, um, maybe even in the movies, wherever else you see it. Um, 
these internet image, this kind of digital marketing that we can do on the internet with these images really helps expose smaller businesses to much bigger audiences quickly and easily and very inexpensively. So let's go ahead and jump into these real world examples. I definitely want to try to keep you on time tonight. This hangout is scheduled for about 30 minutes, so let's let's get going with the good stuff. And first of all, we're going to start off with an e-commerce business. Um, and as far as e-commerce businesses go, one of my favorites to look at, and of course most of my examples are going to be from Pinterest uh, because you know that's where I like to live and breathe and do everything that I do. Um, and for an e-commerce example, I really like Target. And Target has been using Pinterest, I think, since almost the beginning of Pinterest. You know, um, they've been on it for years, and they have tried and tested different things. And this is one situation where we can actually learn from a big company because they do have the flexibility to to test things to try things, to do things. And in this example that I'm showing you here, um, they have an image on the left, and it's kind of this square or this rectangle shaped thing, and it's actually a rug. I'm not sure, depending on how big your screen is, you might not be able to tell that, but underneath it's an indoor diamond rug. And you can see the price there. This is a product rich pin, but that's more Pinterest stuff anyway. Um, and, and that's great. And it has 57 repins good. You know, it's a $19 rug. Yeah, that's affordable. Um, but the image on the other side, you see the rug on the floor and it's this big setting. And I can much, I have a much deeper connection. I can really, you know, I picture myself in that setting. I like beach and coastal decor and that kind of thing. And oh, look at how they use that rug. Look at how they use that pillow. Oh, all of these things are for sale at Target. And this pin actually links back to the sales page for this rug. Um, it still has the same description. It's the for, for the same product. But now I can imagine, this picture has helped me imagine how I can use this rug in what kind of setting. And they could very easily make multiple images of this same product in different settings, maybe something with a more traditional decor, maybe something more modern and funky and not quite so coastal beachy. Um, but no matter which way they decorate it, it's helping inspire the viewer in ways that they could use it and maybe kind of pushing them to that next level of wanting to buy it. Um, and this is something even small e-commerce stores can do. I was actually working with a client earlier this week and we were kind of going through this. She has a product and I was helping her, you know, kind of come up with staging ideas to, you know, to show off her products because just the flat product, which we're kind of used to seeing maybe on stores like Amazon, um, it doesn't really kind of inspires to make that next step. When we're on Amazon, we know what we're looking for. We're not really browsing. We're not discovering things like we are on, you know, platforms like Pinterest or Google Plus or Twitter or, or even Facebook where we're just kind of, you know, perusing the feed and seeing what comes up. Um, when we're on those e-commerce sites, we're already ready to buy. Um, but images like this can kind of push us over to making us want to buy. So let's take another look at another great example that uh, Target has created. In this image, um, Target has created kind of a taller infographic step-by-step -step image where they show the steps to make this little, little kind of container thing out of a recycled baby wipes container. And it's like, oh, that's a cute idea. I didn't know you could do that with baby wipes. But when you click on it, it takes you over to this page on their um, website where it has each individual product that you would need to make it, from the paint to the baby wipes to tape that you can use to mask off the different areas. Um, so they kind of make it easy for you to buy all the things necessary for this project. Um, and you can see this has been very popular on Pinterest. It has been pinned just this one individual pin. I can't tell you exactly how many times this image has been pinned, but right now, just for the pin that I found in this one, it's over 7,500 times. That's a lot of repins. That's a lot of exposure. And, you know, small businesses can do this. If you have products that maybe you can use in different ways, you can do different projects. Um, these tall images with multiple images in, in them do really, really well on Pinterest. And, you know, different variations of these could be made up for different platforms. You could do a square image divided up into four smaller squares for Instagram, um, showing the same thing. Unfortunately, you can't link out of Instagram, but it can definitely get people to engage and to like your images. And then, of course, you could always leave that link in your, in your description, in your bio, on your main Instagram account if you really want to link them out to it. So let's go on over to the next slide. 
And let's look at an example of a local business. This is uh, sometimes bis a business that has a little bit of a challenge, you know, kind of trying to manage the day-to-day -day things plus creating content, but it can really, really pay off. Um, this is from uh, Organic Color Systems, and actually they're kind of a B2B, and they work with local businesses, but these could really apply apply no matter what type of business. Um, show your expertise in your industry, whether you have you know, a roofing company, a siding company, a security company, um, a graphic design company, whatever it is that you do, um, show your expertise. What are the trends in your industry? How can you help you know, your clients with whatever it is that they use your product for? In this case, it's hair care. So we missed a couple of uh, slides here. Let me back up. There we go. Um, and let's let's talk a little bit about B2B and this is something that's kind of near and dear to my heart because this is what I create content around you know I am a, a B2B business myself and it makes me cringe and this is one of those don't examples. <laughs> this is where I'm going to pick on somebody. I did hide names and things to protect the innocent, but as you can see this article was published on June 2nd of this year, so just a few days ago. And this is a really, really um, a really big multinational conglomerate type <laughs> corporation here with huge huge budgets and this is from their blog um, it's very boring um, it's just a lot of text sorry guys it's, it just is you know there's not much to it and this teeny teeny tiny image that's up in the left hand corner is all they're using to really engage you with this article um, it's not it just doesn't work and it they should be able to do more they have the resources they have the budget and you know even just making the picture bigger would help um, but yeah not so great and this is kind of for a tax financial um, type of company so let's look at how a b2b business could do this better um, so I found a, a pretty good image an entrepreneur you know is a, a great publication you know it's been around for years they have actually you know a print presence in their magazine so you think their visuals would be stunning but they do okay. Um, they use kind of, you know, okay stock photography and, you know, it's colorful and, you know, it kind of does catch your attention, but it really doesn't explain what is going on in that image. Why should I click on it? It might be enough to catch my eye, but it's not great. And in this example that I'm, you know, showing you from Pinterest, it's wide, it's not tall, and we know that tall images do better on Pinterest than, than wide images. A better example is constant contact constant contact. Um, I love them. They're you know, a great email service provider uh, for businesses and they help businesses with social media marketing as well. Um, and you know, this image is definitely descriptive and it tells people what to do, um, but you know, maybe it's just you know, lacking a little bit in, in color or something in perspective. It's, it's better though, so we're, we're, we're getting better. And then there's another big B2B company which is actually doing you know pretty well. Um, Robert Half, um, and this was kind of from their financial side of things, which is kind of a staffing agency who's worked with independent contractors, um, put out this quote image, but it asks for engagement. Um, so it's really simple. It doesn't have to have, you know, really, you know, elaborate photography or anything like that to be really successful. Um, but it works, you know. What's your favorite part of being an accountant? And this could be used across multiple social networks. Um, HubSpot and Guy Kawasaki have teamed up together and I really love this image. You know, it's engaging, it's funny, follow me on Twitter and it's a trash can, I mean, come on, you know. Um, really, really funny there. And then Social Media Examiner is revamping their images. They're really coming out with some great Pinterest specific images. They all follow a really unique style, so once I see them, I know that the style of image is coming from Social Media Examiner. Uh, really engaging, really uh, descriptive and informative too. Uh, we've already discussed the local business one and let's go ahead now that we've seen those examples of what really you know is good what works you know maybe some different examples from different kinds of industries let's go back and talk a little bit about the strategy behind it Jason you want to go ahead and take over all right yes can you hear me I can hear you okay good um, okay so talking about the strategy if we take a look at this image um, we're going to talk about the design strategy behind that main center image there of the website. And so this is a website for a tax accounting service up in Seattle. And this is a website that I worked on. And what the problem or the challenge that we had there that ties in with the strategy of knowing your customer and understanding their fears and concerns was when you look at the name of that firm, McGuire, Heckman and Associates Incorporated, uh, it really had that, that corporate expensive feel and 
it could really kind of scare some customers off. And so we see we have a really professional logo. We have some really serious colors that are working there. And yet, really, this, this um, business's client was the small business owner primarily. And so what we wanted to do was to really create an image that would make this company feel accessible to the small business owner. And so that's why we went and looked for an image that would be uh, somewhat friendly, that would kind of relate to their fears and concerns. They're struggling with doing their taxes. They're just kind of overwhelmed with all of it. And then uh, if you look at like the font design, and this is something we go into in the course quite a bit, is how to pick fonts that will accomplish what we want them to accomplish. And, and this particular font using one uh, like this is one that you have to be really, really careful with, but there was a real strategy behind using it here. And what that was was to basically give a friendlier, a more accessible, down-to-earth feel to this website that had we um, continued on with that theme maybe from the logo there, we could have made it feel very, very corporate, very expensive, very inaccessible to their target customer, which was the small business owner. And so that was really a lot of the psychology or the planning that went behind the design of this image and the selection of the font. And so that's one good example of kind of the thought process, process that you want to go through as you're designing your images. Um, we could move on to another example. Okay. Oh, Here's, wait. Oh, sorry. <laughs> my, mouth, okay. my mouse got out of control. No, one more. There we go. There we go. Here's another image that I designed for a small cleaning company. And here is one that uh, we talked about, Cynthia, you talked a lot about earlier, and, and Sarah as well, about images that uh, trigger certain emotions or responses. And so here we had a company that was Echo Pro Cleaning. And, and so we did a couple things with the text here. Number one was we kind of defined what Echo meant in this case, that these were Echo-friendly cleaning products that they used, and that they were residential uh, cleaning company. So we wanted to kind of use the text areas to really identify what they were. And as I, as you can probably tell, this is a Facebook um, this is a Facebook cover image here. And then in addition to that, though, we wanted to have an image that would trigger someone to think, you know, maybe I need to think about having clean, you know, a clean house. Do I really have a clean house? Is my house clean enough? Do I have time to make it clean enough? And that's why we select selected the picture of, a, of the baby there. And you can see that that baby is, is walking on all fours on a very shiny, clean floor. And so what we're trying to do is really trying to trigger in the person's mind the idea that, is my house that clean? I do want my house that clean, and I want it to be eco-friendly. I want the products that are used on that floor that my baby might be crawling on to, to be you know, safe for them to be around and so on. And so we don't have a lot of space to convey all of those things in a Facebook cover image. But by carefully selecting the photo that we use there, we're trying to kind of tap into some of those, those things that would subconsciously come to our mind as we look at that. And then again, we wanted to give the impression that being residential specialists, but that they were also reasonable priced, that they were friendly and easy to deal with. And so that's why we went with the handwriting font there for the slogan, we make coming home feel good. Again, it was to try to give it an approachable, comfortable feel to kind of really um, appeal to the target audience. Now what's interesting is when we look at images, and baby images uh, do evoke a lot of powerful feelings and emotions, and so it's, it's a good image to be careful with. Um, some psychological studies that have been done on people's responses to babies and pictures of babies, they do make us happy and they make us feel good, but also they trigger in us the need to care and to look after and to, to act. And so it, we have to use images like this that trigger those in, in the appropriate way. So if we put a baby image um, in the wrong place, maybe we use a baby image and we're advertising ice cream. Well, now we've kind of psychologically, we may have made them happy and smile, but they're also thinking it could kick in those emotions of I need to protect and provide for this baby. And so maybe ice cream isn't the best thing to feed my baby. And so you, you want to actually think about the whole process that somebody might psychologically go through when they see these images. And so actually like for this image though, that was the perfect thing that we wanted to invoke with that. We wanted people to think, oh, I need to take care of my kids. I need to make sure that it's a clean, safe environment for them. And so that was a lot of the thought process that went behind, you know, something that looks very simple, but there was a lot of thinking that went into choosing the images and how we laid it out and presented it. Yeah, definitely well done there.
Yeah, um, Jason, you mentioned those uh, shiny floors in that uh, image. We actually have a question relating to shiny things, actually. Okay. Um, from Jay Richardson, he wants to know, uh, what if you work with something that is highly reflective, such as chrome or mirror and glass? These items, for me, are so hard to get good photos of. So do you have any recommendations on what um, a business owner with something in that sort of range of shiny things, um, what they can do to get good images of their products? Yeah, great question. And um, first, just the first and foremost, simple kind of rule of thumb when you're, and, and I'm assuming that you're talking about taking your own pictures now of, of these sorts of, of objects. And what you would want to do that would be your number one most inexpensive, easiest way to do this would to, to be to take pictures on a cloudy day. And so you're going to want to do it um, at a time where we, you don't have a lot of direct sunlight that's going to be hitting those surfaces. You have dif naturally diffused light, which is going to um, enable you to to not have a lot of those really high sheen, you know, hot spots in your images, unless you're, of course, trying to go for that effect. But, but based on the question, I would assume that we're trying to minimize that. So that would be a number one uh, easiest way to do it is wait for a, a, a kind of a cloudy overcast day to take that photo. And then, of course, um, if you're doing something inside and you're taking pictures like that, just look at simple ways to diffuse the light. And so it could be as easy as putting a... Um, a sheet or something kind of hanging it in front of the light that's going to diffuse and mute that light so that you're not getting those those shiny hot spots on your images. Yeah, yeah, for amateur photographers, flash is like a flash, you know, photography is like a big kind of pain in the neck. <laughs> uh, yes. when you have those dark things, um, you know, but you know when he when I heard that question, I kind of think of well, maybe, you know, dark backgrounds, but then you have the shiny reflective and you need some sort of light source. Um, you know, so it's I think it's just a matter of playing with the light. Uh, sunlight, you know, as you've mentioned Jason a couple of times here is the best, um, you know, kind of light for photos, especially for us amateurs. Um, who don't have all the the gadgets and gizmos that the professionals have? Um, I actually even saw a trick uh, just on an I, a YouTube video yesterday, where people made their own kind of filter for their lens, for their camera lens, by using sunglasses. Um, so you could get kind of those photo filters to go over, you know, the big, you know, DSLR cameras and that type of thing. Um, but you can kind of get a similar effect if you put different color pieces of plastic in front of your iPhone lens or your smartphone lens, Android phone or whatever it is you have. So there's lots of different little tricks and tips. Um, and sometimes, you know, I think it's still okay, you know, especially every now and then to go ahead and hire that professional, that photographer, that graphic designer. And then you can learn from what they did. Watch that photo session. Look at how they designed those images, what colors, what shapes. And then you can use that as inspiration for your images moving forward. All right, let's go ahead and, and continue on with our presentation here. If there aren't any other questions, Sarah? Um, no, it doesn't look like it at the moment. However, um, Eileen Smith has um, brought up the question if we are going to use the Q&A app for questions or the event page. And just to let everybody know, um, go ahead and post those questions on the um, Google Plus event page, and I will be sure to get, bring those up for you guys. Yes, Miss Eileen Smith, we love having her around in our Hangouts. Thank you for show, for coming up, Miss Eileen, and you don't know all those great little Google tricks and, and things with Q&A apps. I'm, I'm still getting my, my feet wet when it comes to those, but thank you so much for coming. Um, so now let's talk a little bit about, and we'll definitely take some questions here at the end, about our course, Web Images Made Easy, and kind of take a peek behind the scenes. And this is just our, our homepage here, and you can find all this information at webimagesmadeeasy.com. And if you want to, you can start using the hashtag easy images. Um, even if you just start creating images, I'm going to be monitoring that hashtag and, and share what you've got. I'd love to see what you're doing, maybe give you a little bit of feedback. I, I really um, enjoy seeing the work that other people create because I think it's a really fun, fun process. Um, in the product itself in the course, uh, we do have multiple, multiple videos. I think we're up over to 27 videos, right, Jason? Yes. Yes, 27 videos right now, and we will continue to add videos that take you through strategy and, and tools to use and sources of inspiration, and even some bonus material in there that we're going to show you here in just a sec. Um, but we really want to make this a comprehensive course, but easy 
to understand, easy to navigate, um, and and really fun to get through. You know, we we really wanted to make this enjoyable and not overwhelming because we've got way you know we've got too much in our life that's overwhelming. Let's just, let's keep this fun and easy. Um, we also include some tutorials, you know, for some of the most popular tools out there. Uh, primarily right now we're, we're focusing on Canva and PicMonkey. Those are two absolutely free tools that you can use. Um, if you want to upgrade to, you know, the premium version of PicMonkey, you can, but you can do a lot with the free version. Canva is free uh, for just, you know, regular use unless you want to use some of their stock photography, and then it's only a dollar an image, you know, so pretty darn affordable there as well. Um, so we go step by step through the features and maybe some tips and tricks that you might not be aware of as far as how to use these two tools and help guide you through. Um, the bonus material, uh, this is some part where we got to have a little fun. We show you how to make GIF images, which are like moving animation images, which are playable within Pinterest. Um, they're coming to Facebook, um, the last I heard, and they can really help increase engagement because something is moving. It's like there are little mini animations going on with images that you create. And if you go over to ohsopinteresting.com and on any of the blogs or um, podcast show notes, you'll see a GIF for Web Images Made Easy playing and looping on the um, sidebar. And we also go into infographics and how to use um, uh, PicMonkey to create infographics. And Canva just launched um, an infographic uh, layout tool themselves. So infographics are becoming even more and more easier to make, and we show you how to do that. And we also share some templates uh, for image sizes. We're going to have this handy reference guide, so when you're creating images for the different social networks, you'll know exactly what dimensions you need to use, and we will be sure to keep that up to date because... We know that places like to change their image sizes and we just can't keep up. It seems like sometimes they just keep on changing. Um, and all of this, we, I know we're kind of running out of time here. We will stay on to ask, answer any questions that you have. Um, it's it's 49 bucks. You know, it's that's what uh, it, it takes just to get the whole course and to keep on, you know, getting updates of the course. Um, also included is uh, access to a private Facebook group where you can share your images, ask more questions about maybe some photography types of issues. I know we already have a photographer in the group and maybe she'll come in and you know maybe give her a little bit of expertise there. Um, and we want to give you feedback on your images, you know, maybe even help you get ideas because I know sometimes every now and this, just like writer's block, I get image block. What 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 do I make this next image out of? And um, you know, I go to my sources of inspiration. That's usually all it needs. But sometimes talking to people helps and, and that's what we want that group to be there for. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing this presentation. Oh, there we go. Am I back on camera? There we go. The lighting has changed so much in here. The sun went down and now I look like I'm kind of in a horror movie so watch out for what comes around the corner. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so as far as the course goes, for everybody that stuck around tonight and for watching this live event, we, we thank you so much and even if you catch the, the video recording here a little bit later, uh, we do want to kind of offer a kind of a contest promotional thing that we're doing. If you buy the course by midnight this Sunday night, which will be the, what day is that Sarah? That's too much math for me to do. Oh uh, the, <laughs> let me get my calendar Sunday the 14th. Here. 14th. Okay, that's what I thought, but I didn't want to misspeak. Uh, <laughs> by midnight on Sunday the 14th, um, if you buy it between now and then, we will put your name into a drawing for $50 worth of free Canva stock photography. So essentially, you'll get the class for free because you'll get it all back in free images. Um, so that um, is going to be open until midnight Sunday the 14th. That's Eastern Time of the United States, um, you know, because that's always this time zone things with now that we have these things going around the world get kind of confusing. Um, so we're really excited about that. We're excited about this product. I've had so much fun with Jason making it. Um, Sarah, any other questions from, from the viewers tonight? Well, yeah, it actually looks like Eileen has another question. Um, you just mentioned stock images. Um, she would like to know, do you use any free stock image sites such as Unsplash or Pixabay? I primarily use free stock images. <laughs> you know, I am a small business owner on a budget, and when I can, um, I do use both of those sources. Included in the product are lists of other free sources to find images online. That's another resource that we want to keep up to date as much as possible. Um, there's one called the Stocks right now, that and Pexels. There's so many out there right now that are just you know doing some really great work. Some are a little bit more organized than others. Some are updated a little bit more frequently. Um, 
Um, but yeah, definitely try to use free images as much as I can. Um, sometimes, you know, we see those free images everywhere, but we can tweak them just a little bit with the filters in PicMonkey or in Canva, or maybe cropping down and zooming in to just a specific part of it. Uh, most of the images, if not all, if I'm trying to remember right, I think maybe I paid for one on Canva, but all the other images that I had in, in the slides that I talked about, they were all free images from one of those sources. Um, so you can really get some really great stock photography, you know, to that, that's free, you know. And if you know, if I'm on a time crunch, um, if I um, you know don't have time to do a little bit of research in those images, then I do have some sources where I do pay for images. Um, but I try to avoid that, you know, as much as I can. Uh, but sometimes it is easier. Yes, here's a dollar, two dollars, whatever it is. I do, you know, they have a, a better search tool or, or whatever the case might be. But I do pay for them sometimes. Yeah, and I'll jump in there real quick too, Cynthia, on that. Um, inside the course, that is one of the things that we really did try to provide was some good resource lists. So you you created a really extensive page on sources for stock photography, both free and paid, some of the best ones that are out there. Um, because there's a lot of, you could spend a ton of time with low quality free image sites. So the ones that we've curated there are really, you know, the best of the best. But in addition to that, We've done a lot of things like um, introduced you to color tools like Adobe CC Color that will help you to choose color schemes if you're trying to design um, some images from scratch or maybe add some some graphics or text to it and you want to find some com complementary colors. And there's also some tools in there for, for doing things like font pairing so that you can mm -hmm. identify what kind of font would look good and how you could blend them together with a couple different fonts that will go well. And, and so there's a lot of of resources inside there that will introduce you to those tools that the vast majority of them are free and it's just nice to know where to go to to get to them quickly and how to make the most of them. Yeah, and Jason, you did a great job really going through the strategy and the psychology of graphic design. Um, there are some basic fundamentals that, you know, us as non-graphic designers, or maybe we just don't have that natural God-given talent to understand or create great, beautiful images, um, that if we just know these fundamentals, it'll make the process so much easier. And Jason does a really great job of explaining them within the course. Um, you know, just really simple, basic things, but sometimes having just that basic fundamental knowledge can make a huge difference in how your images come up. So that's one part of the course that I'm, I'm really happy that Jason was able to, to contribute to it, you know, that he has a, a more of a background in that than I do, and it just, it just came out really well. So, so thank you for that, Jason. <laughs> so, well, I, we've already hit a little bit past our mark. Um, if there aren't any other questions, Sarah, we're going to go ahead and wrap things up for tonight. Thank you, everyone that watched live. I really do appreciate you taking time out of your evening or your day, depending on where you are in the world, um, to join us for this. Thanks so much, and have a great evening. Thank you, Thank Sarah you and Jason, much. for Thank coming you. on. Thank you.